and then yeah <clears throat> so hi everyone um, my name is Lydia and I'll be presenting chapter eight of data visualization in R which is on statistical models our learning objectives are to describe graphs that can help you interpret the results of statistical models focusing on models that have a single response variable that is either quantitative a number or binary yes or no <clears throat> so first we'll talk about like correlation plots now sorry i have like a little cough <laughs> so correlation coefficients are used to measure how strong a relationship is between two variables and there are several types of correlation coefficients but the most popular is Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient which is commonly used in linear regression so correlation plots help you to visualize this pairwise relationship between a set of quantitative variables by displaying their correlations using color or shading. So first we'll look at the Saratoga Houses data set, and it contains the sale price and characteristics of Saratoga County New York homes in 2006. Um, and we'll use it to explore the relationships among the quantitative variables. So yeah, so we're using Saratoga Houses data set from the Mosaic data package. And we created a um, data frame using dplyr, and we're selecting um, the variables that are numeric. And the, yeah. And then we're going to calculate the core co yeah, correlations using the core function um and then round it to two decimal places so here you see the correlation the correlation coefficients uh it might not be too easy to read but if you see on the diagonal there's ones on the diagonal that just means like so here it's price by price and obviously it's a perfect correlation with itself lot size by lot size perfect correlation age age by age and so on and so forth. So, and then basically, yeah, so variables are perfectly correlated with themselves kind of thing. Um, and yeah, so then next, so we'll be looking at the ggcore plot package. Um, and within the ggcore plot package, there's a ggcore plot function and it can be used to visualize these correlations. So by default, it does create ggplot2 graph where the darker red indicates a stronger positive correlation. Like for example, you see on the diagonal where the correlation is one, it's perfectly correlated. Um, Cause yeah, that each of the variables correlated with itself. And then the darker blue indicates stronger negative correlations and white indicates no correlation at all. So yeah, so some of the ones that look like they're white, it's like age by lot size or age by land value. I can't tell if it's like 100% white, but yeah, you kind of see. And then also something to be noted, um, like on the diagonal, um, these are like the colors on the diagonal, it's a mirror image of itself. And we'll kind of see more of that in the next one. Um, but yeah, so with this, the library, we're using ggplot2 and then also the gg, Core plot library, and then using GB core plot, we um, plot R, which, if you remember, is our where we stored our um, correlation coefficients in the previous slide. And then, yeah, so more about the GG core plot function. Um, it has a number of functions for customizing the output. For example, hc.order equals true where there's the variables, placing variables with similar correlation patterns together. Um, so yeah, like you'll kind of see if like the darker red are closer together, the, the blue, or it looks more purple, but yeah, the blue and like the lighter red, they're more closer together. And then you have type is equal to lower, um, where it lower, plots the lower portion of the correlation matrix. And again, I mentioned this, like I said earlier, when we had, um, when we had the names of the, um, like when the diagonal was specifically plotting each variable against itself, where it was, um, 
where you see like it was a perfect correlation now because they've reordered it you don't you no longer see that um you no longer see that um dia that diagonal with the perfect correlation but you do see um but yeah each of these like the values are only plotted once it, you can only like the reason you're able to plot it only on the lower half is because um like literally it's a mirror it'll be a mirror image and duplicated so like for example this one bedrooms by lot size if we find bedrooms here and lot size there this value here would be the same value there if we had it on both sides so it doesn't actually provide any additional information to have both the upper and lower plotted so that's why you can do that and then lab equals true um, overlays the correlation coefficients as text on the plot so yeah so you see the difference between the one we had in the previous slide where all the all the boxes are shaded you'll notice like it's they're a mirror image of one another like up here bathrooms by let's see bathrooms on the vertical and age here and again, this one down here is again age in bathrooms, so it's a mirror image. Um, and yeah, you don't have the specific correlation, but just can only go by like the shading. Whereas this one, you have the you have the shading, you have the just the lower portion, and then also again it reorders them, so it's not like you don't have that diagonal where every where each of the variables was perfectly correlated with itself. It didn't show on this, basically. OK, so next we have linear regression. And linear regression allows us to explore the relationship between a quantitative response variable and explanatory variable, while other variables are held constant. So below is a model to predict home prices, which is the response variable. Um, by the explanatory variables, lot size, in square feet, age in years, land value in thousands of dollars, living area by square feet, um, number of bedrooms, bathrooms, and whether a home is on the waterfront or not. So yeah, so here we called the data, we're using the Sarat Saratoga Houses data from the Mosaic um, data package. And then we create our model, which is we're calling houses underscore LM. And we're gonna use the LM function and we're plotting price again, which is our response variable by lot size, age, land value, living area, bedrooms, bathrooms, and waterfront. And again, later we call again our data. And then it didn't have it in the book, but I added this um, or rather in the actual function they had in the book. It didn't show you these values, but you did have the table in the book. So I added summary, like the summary of houses, specifically extracting the coefficients. So we see, like we see the estimate for the um, the coefficient estimates for our variables as well as the intercept, um, standard error, p value, and the p value. So, for example, we estimate that an increase of one square foot of living area is associated with a home price increase of seventy five dollars. So where you get this is lo looking at this row for um, living area, um, you see our estimate is 7.5 e to the one where, well, approximately 7.5. Um, and this is like scientific notation. So it's like, um, they put e, but I think it's basically base 10. So 7.5 times 10, which is 75. So $75 price increase, um, holding all other variables equal. And then also we estimate for a waterfront home to cost it costs approximately one hundred and twenty thousand and seven hundred twenty one hundred twenty thousand seventy seven hundred and twenty six dollars more than non waterfront homes again controlling all other variables in the model um so here I want to say this is like a I guess it would be considered a dummy variable where our base is that waterfront it's not like our base is that waterfront know that it's not a waterfront type of it, um, property. So 
and this is oh, if it's not a waterfront property um you'd actually i guess the base is yeah i'm not <laughs> i'm not fully explaining it properly well actually so i guess if you have a property that's not waterfront it subtracts um this which is like so it's base 10 to the fifth which is like i want to say ten thousand no a hundred thousand yeah so a hundred thousand times this was that many years so yeah that's where they end up getting the one hundred twenty thousand seven hundred and twenty six dollars from um because yeah when it's not a waterfront you're subtracting that much so if it is a waterfront it costs that much more okay so then we have the viz reg package and this package provides tools for visualizing these conditional relationships um the viz reg function within that package um one takes the model and two the variable of interest and plots the conditional relationship controlling for all other variables and using the option gg equal true is used to produce a ggplot2 graph so we get we call the ggplot2 library the visreg library and then within the visreg function we plot that model we did for houses the um cost of houses and the the variable of interest here is living area and we do gg equals true to have this ggplot2 plot and looking at this, the graph suggests that holding all else equal or all the other variables equal, um, sales price increases with living area in a linear fashion, as you can see, and based on this one. Okay, so let's do another linear regression example. So continuing the example, the price difference between waterfront and non-waterfront homes is plotted below controlling for the other seven variables. And since the ggplot2 is produced, other ggplot2 functions can be added to customize the graph. So here we have the conditional plot of price versus waterfront location. So we use within the VizReg um, function, we again call our, our model, and then waterfront is the variable of interest and gg equals true to plot it on our ggplot2. And then, so we do scale continuous label the scales with dollar sign. And then within the labs, within the labs function, we set our title relationship between price and location. Our subtitle controlling for lot lot size, age, land, bed, and bedrooms and bathrooms. Sorry, it kind of cuts the, the scroll that way. Our caption where the source is the Saratoga housing data. You can see that um, all these things up there. Um, where the y our y axis is the home price and the x is the waterfront. And so we see that there are far fewer homes on the water, like these observations over here. There's far fewer fewer homes on the water, and they tend to be more expensive, even controlling for size, age, and um land value. So yeah, where you see this um like for yes waterfront, these values like this is um basically the regression line where your expected value could be for when a home is on the waterfront with all the other variables held equal, or rather if they're controlling for the other variables. So then we have logistic regression, um, not my strong suit. <laughs> so with logistic regression, it can be used to explore the relationship between a binary response variable an explanatory variable while other variables are held constant. Um, so binary response variables have two levels, for example, yes, no, live, died, pass, fail, or malignant, benign. And as with linear regression, we can use the VizReg um, package to visualize these relationships. Um, so we're gonna be looking at the CPS 85 data set. Um, so the CPS 5 data set is from the mosaic data pack the mosaic data package and contains the 1985 data on wages and other characteristics of workers and using this data we're going to predict the log odds of being married given one sex age race and job sector i do have um 
anything that's blue, it has like a link, like it's a hyperlink for more information. I'll probably go, if anyone has questions or comments, feel free to stop me if you want more clarification on it. Um, I'll probably have to read directly from <laughs> the website, but yeah, if you have any, want any clarification or if you want to mention anything, feel free. Um, so yeah, so here we're going to fit the logistic model for predicting marital status, um, where the, the binary responses are like married or single. And so our data, the CPS 85, um, from the package mosaic data. And then, so we're naming our model CPS 85 underscore GLM, and we use the GLM package, um, or the GLM function, where we're, our response variable is married. And then like this tilde, I want to say. Um, so it's like married by sex, age, race, and sector. Um, family is equal to binomial. Um, you put that in within GLM, that's what you would use um, specifically to do a, a logistic regression. And again, our data set is a CPS 85. So visualizing logistic regression. Using the fitted model, we visualize the relationship between age and the probability of being married, holding the other variables constant. And we can use scale is equal to response option to create a plot based on probability rather than the log of the log of scale. Um, yeah, so to plot the results, we call the gplot2 library, call the visreg um, library, and then within the visreg function, we call our model cps85 underscore glm, and our variable of interest is age, um, gg equals true so that we have the gplot, and then scale is equal to response so that we have the probability rather than the log odds scale. And then we add, and again, it's a ggplot2, a ggplot, so we can um, do more, um, put more options in or do more like customization. So we add our, our labels where y on the y-axis, probability of being married, you see here on the x-axis, you see age. The title of our graph is relationship of age and marital status. And our subtitle is controlling for sex, race, and job sector. And our caption is source current population survey 1985. And here we see the probability of being married is estimated to be around half at age 20. So like age 20, it's around half and decreases to 0.1 at age 60. Yeah, um, controlling for the other variables. So you can also visualize for multiple conditional logistic regressions um, plots. And so we can create multiple conditional plots by um, adding a by option. And I should have put that, yeah, by adding the by option. Um, the following code plots the probability of being married given age separately for men and women. Um, that's by putting in this, this code by is equal to sex and controlling for race and job sector. So to plot our results, again, the usual libraries within VisReg, we call our model, um, the CS CPS 85 underscore GLM. And again, our variable of interest is age, but we're gonna um, have multiple plots based on the sex. GG equals true to have our plot and scale equals response so that we um, have the probability versus the log odds scale. And then again, our labels, um, yeah, there were same labels from the last time. And this time you see that we have two plots. If you see at the top under the title and subtitle, there's an F here for female and an M here for male. And in the data, the probability of marriage is very similar for both women and men, as you can see the like the actual plot looks fairly similar for both of them. Okay, so survival analysis. So in many research settings, especially healthcare research, the response variable is the time to an event, such as time to recovery, time to death, or time to relapse. And if the event has not occurred for an observation, either because the study ended or the patient dropped out, the observation is said to be censored. 
So the NCCTG Lung Cancer Dataset is the survival package. In the survival package, provides data on the survival times of patients with advanced lung cancer following treatment for up to 34 months. And the outcome of each patient is me measured by two variables, one time, which is the survival time in days, and two status, where one is equal to censored and two is equal to dead. Thus, a patient with time equal to 305 and status equal to two lived for 305 days following treatment, and another patient with time equal to 400 and status equal to one lived for at least 400 days, but then dropped out of the, the study. And then a patient with time 1,022 and status one survived to the end of the study, which is 34 months. So survival plots using GG serves plot. So a survival plot, also called a Kaplan-Meier curve, can be used to illustrate the probability with that an individual survives up to and including time t. So to plot the survival curve, we're going to use the library survival and the library survive serve minor. And our data is long. And we, um, we're going to create the object S fit where we're using the survive fit function. And in that survive time, um, time and status by one data is equal to long. Um, and then the reason GG survive plot, plotting that, um, I guess that would be the model we created. And then we add the title of Kaplan Meyer curve for lung cancer survival. Um, so we see that roughly 50% of patients are alive 300 days post treatment. So yeah, that's 50. So yeah, approximately 300. And then you can also run summary SFIT for more details about. Um, the model, and I can do that a bit later. So then also we have comparing survival probabilities. Um, it's frequently of great interest whether groups of patients have the same survival probabilities. So in the graph below, the survival curve for men and women is compared. Um, so we have our function um, where we use the survive fit, survive time, time and status by sex. Um, or last time, if you remember, it's by one. And I'm not too familiar with those functions, so if I don't explain it better, that's kind of why. But yeah, so then we use the GG survive plot to plot um, the model we had. Um, we have confidence and goal. Comp int equals true. Um, that provides the confidence intervals. We have p-values equal to true. It gives us this p-value. That you see here. Oh, sorry. That you see here. Um, the legend, the legend dot lab is equal to um, the concatenate male and female. You have this here for the legend, um, the legend labels, and where the title is equal to sex. Legend dot legend dot title. For the palette, we've chosen the colors cornflower blue and Indian red three. And the title is Captain Meyer Curve for Lung Cancer Survivor. And our X lab is Time Days. And yeah, so as I mentioned before, above we saw the option comp in is used to provide confidence intervals. Then PVAL provides a log rank test comparing the survival curves. Um, and the p value of 0 0.0013 provides strong evidence that men and women have different survival probabilities following treatment. And yeah, that is where, yeah, the smaller the number, like the less likely it is to just be, um, yeah, I should definitely be able to <laughs> explain two values better than that. But yeah, the smaller the number, um, the less likely it is um, that we have um, our null hypothesis that the, um, the survival probabilities are the same um, because it's small. We reject that hypothesis and conclude that they're probably not the same, like the survival probabilities. Okay, so mosaic plots. So mosaic charts can display the relationship between categorical variables using rectangles whose area represent the portion of cases for any given combination of levels. And here we look at the Titanic data set and visualize the relationship 
between the three categorical variables in the code. So this one, we're using a CSV. So we get the reader library um, using like our data is a CSV, the titanic.csv. So we read the CSV and put the data into this object titanic. And then we create this table here to kind of just visualize it and you can see where it's, um, yeah. So you'll see it's based on um, survived, the sex and the class. We're survived, it's yes or no. Class, first, second, third, or crew. Sex, male, or female, or male. And then, so when we look at the actual mosaic plot, so although mosaic charts can be created with ggplot2 using the gg mosaic package, the author actually recommends the vcde package instead. And it won't actually create ggplot2 graphs, but it provides a more comprehensive approach to visualizing categorical data. In a mosaic plot, the size of the tile is proportional to the size to the percentage of cases in that combination of levels. So for example, as seen below, more Titanic passengers perished than survived. So you see survived, no, and yes. You see more of them, more of them didn't survive than did survive. And those that perished were primarily third class male and third class male passengers and male crew, which was the largest portion. Um, so yeah, so here out of the classes, your first class, second class, third class and crew, you see, yeah, crew and third class obviously made up a larger proportion of those who did not survive than first and second. And then within third and crew, where the top portion is female and the bottom portion is male, you see within crew, like this square is the biggest where it's, yeah, the majority of people, um, the biggest group that died was the crew, male crew members, um, followed by male third class passengers. Um, I'm sure like I did. Yeah, so, okay. So yeah, I don't think I mentioned the actual code for it. So yeah, we're gonna use the VCD library um, using Mosaic, we, um, using that table we created and the title we're setting for Titanic data. Okay, so you can also add color to Mosaic plots. So in Mosaic plots, the color of the tiles can also be used to indicate the degree relationship among the variables. And if we assume that these three variables are independent, um, the variable being sex, survived, and class, we can examine the residuals or the error between a predicted value and the observed actual value from the model and shade, shade the tiles to match. So in the graph below, dark blue represents more cases than expected given independence, and dark red represents less cases than expected if independence holds. So yeah. Okay, so actually let me do the code first. So from the VCD, from the VCD package, we're gonna use the mosaic function using the table we created. Um, shading is equal to true, legend is equal to true. Um, we have um, labeling arguments. I didn't go through this code that much to think, but it just, yeah, this looks like we're, Oh, they're renaming things. So they renamed sex to say gender instead. Survived, still survived. Class is equal to passenger class here. Um, set labels. Yeah. And then, yeah, set the labels within survived. It's yes or no. Class, first, second, third, and crew. Sex, F or M for um, female and male. And yeah, the title name is Titanic. Uh, let me double scan out this to see which ones are different. Yes, I think definitely they changed this to gender. Yeah, they changed this to gender and they added the word passenger here. Yeah, they so changed it to passenger class. And then also with the shading, oh, let me see. And then, yeah, instead of 
fully spelling out male and female. They put the M and the F. And then with the shading, we have um, the scale that's for the residuals, which are Pearson residuals. And um, yeah. So we can see that if class, gender, and survival are independent, we're seeing many more crew, more male crew perishing and for second and third class females surviving than would be expected. And conversely, far fewer first class passengers, both male and female died than would be expected by chance. Um, that's the assumption that of independence is rejected. And this kind of makes sense because like if you're familiar with the idea of the Titanic, it was, well, or at least if you watched the movie, <laughs> like they let the first, like these like women and children first, and obviously the first class took precedent over like um, the other classes in the crew. Um, but yeah, and then just a note for complicated tables, labels labels can easily overlap. Um, so you see labeling border, labeling underscore border for plotting options. Yeah, I didn't try that out specifically, but yeah, that's also, again, that's a hyperlink to find out more about that. Let me see. Yeah, it really does, Kotomi. So yeah, Kotomi said pinning color makes it much easier to read. It definitely does. Yeah. So then, yeah, so that's actually the entirety of the presentation of the book itself but I can go to like the R code itself and we can play around with it. Um, some of the resources I added were like the R graph gallery. You guys might be familiar with it. I'll open this, so I'll open it later. Um, just the page on the correlogram, which is again, the correlation plots. And then just the ggplot2 extension gallery. You can find like a lot of different um, like, we mentioned some specific packages here, but like with the ggplot2 extension gallery, it might have like more packages that do the same type of plot. Like for example, where the author suggested the VCD um, package to do the mosaic plots, or is it survival? Yeah, to do the mosaic plots, there could be other um, other packages as well that do the same thing. And also, I just wanted to mention, like when we did the linear log um, logistic regressions, when we we're modeling it, they have like LM and GLM function. So the LM function is used to fit linear models, while the GLM function is used to fit generalized linear models. Um, and again, when we did the um, logistics, we put families equal to binomial um, to specify, yeah, the that it was logistic versus like a different one. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing this for now, and I'm going to go to the code. Oh, I, I think I have a question about like the thing with the um when you put the GLM for plotting. Oh, oh, should I go back to the the code or to the um, if you want to, but um oh, okay. I'm wondering, like, do you know if it works with like if we use like a GLM net model? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, no clue. I've never used a GLM that model, but yes, I imagine you just have to go look more into the Vizreg package. Okay. Which, okay. Let me, all right, I can switch screens to try and, yeah, let me open up that. Okay, so the Vizreg package. Um, so it looks like it uses these, well, so LM, GLM, those, and many more. So potentially, let me put this in the chat. Yeah, so what exactly does GLM net do? So GLM net is like GLM, but um, it add, you can add like penalty terms. So, hmm. It's like the model itself can also do the feature selection. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's the main purpose of it. It's like if you want to, if you yeah, mm. it adds a penalty term that like 
could make it so your model uses less columns. Um, oh. Yeah. It's good for optimization. Okay. But it's It works for both linear and logistic. Okay. And cool. I, yeah, I don't remember good. what the package is to do it in linear, but I know for a logistic, it's GLMnet. Hmm. I think there's, oh, let's see, because I was on the, I had it in this, like there's the R documentation. Yeah, was, so I added those. I'm wondering if there's like an LM net. Well, actually, let me just search LM. Um, uh, I know like when I was putting GLM in, GLM net was one of the first ones that came up. Um, but yeah, I'm not exactly sure how to know if there's a specific, like what you're saying for the LM, but yeah, I will put this in the chat for GLM net. Yeah, so thank you. Um, I guess any other questions or anything else you guys would want to see before I go to the code? Okay. If not, let me switch over to my R Studio. That's not my R Studio. Is it? Okay, you can see my screen. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, so this is, yes, yeah, so we have about like the 19 more minutes. Um, so yeah, this was all the code I had. I think the first one I could do is going over like the correlation, the Juju core plot again. So like, again, here where we had all these, um, all these options we put in, let me look at the help for Juju core plot. Yeah. So type is equal to lower or okay. So yeah, so another option for that instead of using type is equal to lower, we can have type is equal to upper and run that. Yeah, so it switches. It switches um, the actual correlations from being on the lower portion of the plot to the upper portion. Um, I would guess like labs equals false is the default. So assuming if we did labs is equal to false, and by the default, it would be type is equal to full. And then I guess this is equal. So equal to false. This should with this, it should give us the plot we had in the other one. Yeah. So these are exactly the same. So yeah, by default, HC order is equal to false, type is equal to full, lab is equal to false. Um, but if we change that just back, oh, should have changed one more. Then we have the plot that was in the book, putting HC order equal to true, type is equal to lower, lab is equal to true. And let's see which other ones were interesting. I know, I think in the logistic one, it mentioned that we could look at the summary of the actual. I think it was like telling us we can look at the summary of this. So if I just type in my console, I want to say it was this one that said. Yeah, it kind of does this like the coefficients. So for our GLM model, where it's married by sex, age, race, sector. Um, for our logistic model, it is a set intercept, standard error, C value, and P value. Mm. 
The survival plots, I'm not too familiar with survival analysis, so I'm not going to attempt to explain more of that, but I do feel like I have seen the mosaic, um, the juju mosaic, I feel like it's that I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can show it to you on the our graph gallery. That should be there. Or did you plot to something? Okay, so yeah, this is the other function for making mosaic plots that we didn't use GG mosaic. So yeah, those are, I guess, what one of the mosaic plots using this function would look like. But yeah, so I guess that's honestly, that's the most part what I have for today. Um, but yeah, if anyone has any, I'll stop sharing. If anyone has any other questions or comments, but yeah, if not, then <laughs> oh, Tiffany, yeah, I said thank you, thanks. Oh. <laughs> and no, nice. I don't have questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, sorry. Was... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank you all for joining today. Um, so next week, Femi will be going over chapter nine, which is other graphs. So Femi will be going over that chapter. Um, but yeah, so thank you for joining me today. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. And bye everyone. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you, Lydia. You're welcome. You're welcome. Bye. I'm just putting stop in the chat now.